hydrocarbons and fossil fuels, lather yourself in the finest petroleum, brag about your massive carbon footprint, and remember, you can't make an omelette without breaking some spotted owl eggs. <sighs> because it's time to talk tall to me. My eggs! <laughs> Was it, is it the spotted owl? Is that what I'm thinking of? From the 90s? I, I don't remember. You remember Al Gore was always on about them? I know, I know he was talking about polar bears too at some point, but I don't know. Spotted polar bears. Spotted. Welcome back. I am Omen Sade. And I am Nick McGill. Together we are Feckless Moans. And this is Talk Tall to Me. A shareholders meeting in the unstoppable forward march of prog rock in which neoclassical Nick and opportunity cost Omen do a cost-benefit analysis of every single song that legendary prog rock band Jethro Tull ever produced. We will commission some Palmer prospecting for new resources, take advantage of the John Evans exchange rate, and ride the waves of the bull and bar market, all in the hopes that we can avoid the avaricious arbitration of the Anderson Agency. I mean, we've been doing that for the last three years. That last part. Yeah. <laughs> One step ahead of the law, man. Dun, 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 dun. One jump ahead of the law, man. That's all. And that's no joke. These guys don't appreciate our pro. You know what that's from? I do know what that's from. That's one of my favorite Disney movies because it has Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, hello. Hi, Omen. Hi. Oh, when did you get here, Nick? <laughs> I, hello. Who, who, Welcome. Who, who, who let you in? <laughs> so today, I have, a, I have a bit of an announcement. It's really just a kind of a, just a logistics on the back end announcement. So I, I said last week that I would try to look up, I would try to figure out what the heck Songs from the North was. Yeah. And from what I could tell, Songs from the North is just kind of an offshoot extra additional disc that came in on a Steve Wilson remaster of Heavy Horses. That being said, I'm going to consider the next four episodes that we were initially thinking for Songs from the North as Heavy Horses bonus tracks. Changes nothing for anyone. I see. Sure. For my sake, for the sake of, of organization in my folders on my hard drive and in the Excel sheet that you can check out the, the Talk Tell to Me schedule. The link and who is in the doesn't show notes. want to check out a spreadsheet check in your out, spare oh, time? I'm so happy about that spreadsheet. So proud. Anyway. We're still on heavy horses. We got a month more of heavy horses. But before we get into that, we have ourselves another email. What? <clears throat> Your emails, sir. Now, Marley, if you could. Marley! Oh. You could bring me that uh, piece of. Marley, what? What is that? That scent? Is that a new cologne? I put a dab of kerosene behind my ears. Oh, are you got a, a special evening tonight, or? Oh, I've got a date with a with a motorboat. Oh, uh, okay. Um, more kerosene the better. So you're just are you you going boating, or is this an actual like? Kind of romantic tryst. I mean, some people fall in love with trees. And... I'm gonna light a couple of candles and see what flames up. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, be careful with the the, the kerosene. Just um, you know, I, I'm starting to feel a little little woozy with the the fumes. Could you could you maybe head out to the the backyard and not open a window and yeah. be out? Thank you, thank you, Marley. <laughs> okay, we have ourselves an email, and this is from a new writer. What? Just another dangerous fantasy of mine. Yeah. Quiet innocence. <laughs> that was your idea, by the way. Every time it's I play that, long. You, you roll your eyes. No, it, it is. It is. I do need to trim that. This is from John M. out of Wilmington, Delaware. John. John M. Neighbor to the south for me, to the north for you. John, this email is entitled, Talk Tall to You, Dead or Alive. Oh. 
Moms, my first time as a writer inner, but possibly not the last. Oh, After discovering、boy. the podcast, I've been working my way backwards from heavy horses through to too old to rock and roll.、Hmm. I thought your lyrical interpretation of one of Ian Anderson's finest compositions, "Checkered Flag, Dead or Alive," was mostly spot on. That episode was among the finest I've heard yet. It was fun to listen as you dissected and meandered through the song's main themes. Incredibly insightful recognition for a vastly underappreciated song in the Tall Cannon. Musically, Checkered Flag is one of the best examples of how significant De Palmer's contributions were to the band's sound. Amen to that. Yeah. To me, the song works well even outside the album's context. It's always served as a reminder of life's bittersweet impermanence and the ancient theme of carpe diem. I'd like to offer some additional comments for consideration, since there are several allusions to earlier Ian Anderson songs contained in Checkered Flag. Oh, which we always we always dig a, a reference back. The first stanza's "Taker of the Day" harkens back to wondering again. And it's only the taking that makes you what you are. Verse two repeats familiar Ian Anderson references to warm comfort, streaked sun, the healer, the nurse. And salvation, T. The sunlight streams through the curtain cracks, touches the old man where he sleeps. The nurse brings up a cup of tea, two biscuits, and the morning paper mystery. As referenced in Nursey, Cheap Day Return, and Aqualung. Mm-hmm. True. Oh, Nursey dear, I'm glad you're here to brush away my pain. Does the nurse treat you, old man? The way she should. But with salvation also comes the morning paper mystery. Isn't life and what awaits beyond the ultimate mystery? After giving two sad examples, the song's final verse reminds us to not go rushing toward our ultimate end and appreciate life for the gift that it is. One other note. I believe the piano John Evan features on the song is a Fender Rhodes using a Vibe preamp. Sure sounds like it to my ears. So it's it's kind of plinky, but also kind of mysterious. And he actually provided a YouTube video of said Fender Rhodes using a Vibe preamp. Let's take a listen. Let us compare、that. and despair. Yeah. Sounds pretty darn close.、I、What a、look. gorgeous sound! Yeah, that is is really really lovely. I want more of that in my life. It's a very unique sound for Tull, really. That's, yeah, but it's nice. I will put the link to that video in the show notes. And、Indeed. just to wrap up, anyway, keep up the excellent work with Talk Tull. I'll be tuning in and looking back at old episodes. John M. Well, John M. Thank you so much for that lovely email, and and you know I appreciate your novel. Listening approach, going backwards from the current day. Yeah, you know it's wonderful. The episodes will just get worse and worse as you as you work your way backwards. I, I warned him、origins. already. 
I warned him that, that that is most likely the case. I encouraged him, but also warned him to brace himself as, as yeah. <laughs> we slowly devolve. That's right. And tadpoles. digress. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, I think your points about the the themes of the of the song are spot on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That we all have to carpe the diem before we go into that undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, as it were. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> so thank you so much for writing in. Welcome to the tall, the talk tall to me fam. Yes. And yeah, and and enjoy enjoy your listening. Thank you so much, John M. And that is it for our housekeeping today. Omen, we are going to dive in now to, I believe, a new song for you, correct? Uh, yeah, I believe so. So this is, this is the... Every time it surprises me. (laughs) So this is our bonus track from Heavy Horses slash maybe songs from the North, depending on who you speak to all this all the same thing ultimately because apparently they labeled they labeled the bonus discs that came with the steve wilson remasters that's why there's a bit of a confusion but it came out with that heavy horse remaster so that's why i'm, I'm keeping it with that understood and what is that song that we're listening to that song that we are listening to today is everything in our lives well let's listen to it with Everything in our ears. That's it. Everything. Every bit of it. Nick. Yeah. I am a little mad that I've never heard that song before. <laughs> it's another good one, right? It's really good. I really like it. Yeah, it's it's a rocker. It's very Stormwatch to me in terms sure, yeah. of s- sound and content. Uh, we can get into that later. But I suppose it, it falls in that weird, like, kind of transitional period. Like, we're hearing a lot of these these bonus tracks, particularly the bonus off of Heavy Horses, it's it's it kind of bleeds over into songs from the woods sometimes. It kind of bleeds it uh, leads into well, Stormwatch, but and this that makes one is, sense. You know, it's probably it, it's probably a collection of songs that were from that whole era. You know, it's 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 just because they are at the end. We have them at the end of Heavy Horses doesn't necessarily mean that that is the exact period that they came from. They yeah. they could have been before. They could have been well after. You know, right. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And they were just lumped in this in this collection that we have. But oh my gosh, what a fun sound! It's so funky, fun, mm-hmm. funky, yeah. fun, and fresh. Yeah, it's not as dark as what we will hear on on Stormwatch, but there's there's a there's a pep to it. There's a, there's such a nice energy to it, and yet it has a a fair bit of darkness to it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what hits you musically from the start? Oh my gosh, the first one of the first sounds that I was like, what on earth is that? Is almost that kind of bassoon sack buddy sound. Yeah. I think it's the organ. Yes, I was gonna say it's some weird like synthy bass string something, but the bass part on on the organ and the 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 electric bass are super powerful in this one. There are a lot of instruments layered together in this song and you know we've this is this is a lot different than the too old to rock and roll kind of style where they were they were really layering the instruments individually in one by one this is everything out the gate at the same time yeah punching you in the face in a in a nice way a nice little punch in the face just just a dainty one yeah and you know and everything is just in that mix and there there's a lot going on there i i heard the organ on a couple of different settings at various yes. points, uh-huh. including that really fun bassoon sound. Yep. The bass itself, as you pointed out, is super yummy. Yeah. And the seagulls drive darkly. Is toothsome. We have the flute, mm-hmm. which is, which sounds a lot, almost like a penny whistle at times. Sure.
it's got the it it sounds either it is the flute that Ian is playing in such a way that it's it's reminiscent of it almost reminds me of that little um that sound in the whistler yeah that that almost shrill high sound that Ian doesn't doesn't often go for on the flute. I have a pipe. The flute is the second sound that we hear. It starts with either a really high guitar or mandolin. I know that we have acoustic and mandolin, I think, in this. Yes, we definitely but, have mandolin at some point. Uh, but I, th- I think this opener, the first instrument that we hear, is just a, a, a an acoustic played really, I guess, low down on the neck, right? Because that makes it higher. Let me yeah. let's let's listen again. Sure. Yeah, let's just hear that that opener. <laughs> That's definitely acoustic, right? That's, That's an acoustic, acoustic guitar. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I I would bet I would bet my hair on it. Not your not your beautiful hair. No, I would bet it. Bet all my wigs. I was going to buy you a a, a hair clip for your for your birthday. <laughs> I sold it. It's like the gifts of the mad the magi, except they they sell their own body parts. They sell their organs. <laughs> I was I was going to buy you. A, I bought you this bottle of alcohol. There I you can't go. Drink That's it because I sold my kidneys. I, I sold my kidneys and my liver. And my liver. Later on, we we get into some some electric guitar martin oh, chimes in there i adore the way i i just adore martin Marr, but i i adore the way that he he comes in kind of when you're not expecting with that yeah. with that that delightful slightly harsh very ominous electric sound yeah and and we he really comes forward in that kind of breakdown around two minutes where it's, yes. it's just instrumental. And then he, he kind of sweeps forward with, with his, at this point, what we're accustomed to his electric wangs. Martin and the electric wangs. That's it. That's what his name should have been. Forget the Martin Barr band. Martin Marband, silly. Oh, speaking of of him kind of sneaking in, that's kind of the the entirety of this piece musically. Like you were saying earlier, it's very cacophonous. It's very difficult to to pick out the pieces, not in a bad way, mind no, you. No, it's delightful. It 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 feels like it's it's exciting. It feels like riding a horse along the seashore. Yeah, it, there's some there's some kind of musical form that it reminds me of, and I just don't know enough about musical forms. A hornpipe, perhaps. I want to. I want to tentatively say, a hornpipe. There's something kind of like sailory about it. Oh, okay, okay, like a uh, like a worker song almost. Yeah, let me look up what a hornpipe sounds like. I think you're making up hornpipe. I, I'll put a horn in your pipe. Completely fabricated. I, that is the most delightful video. It's just two a very a very old couple dancing a hornpipe, but it does remind me of that actually. So that oh, okay. form of like okay, it has that kind of feel to it. Yeah, the song is in a four four, a, a very quick four four, super hornpipey right. four four. Yep, the hornpipiest of four fours. <laughs> and what else musically? It kind of is a. It has. It's a. It's a breakdown sandwich. Yeah. On uh-huh. verse bread. There's a there's yeah. a verse at the beginning, a big breakdown, and then a verse at the end. I believe it's a repeating. It re- yep, it verse. repeats. Yeah. Yeah, which is not it's not so bad. Like I, I've I've said in the past that some songs, some longer songs, when they repeat the same thing kind of bug me. They feel too long. But this one the pace that it sets right out of the gate does not feel too long. The song itself is three minutes and 20 seconds. You know, it's it's fairly yeah. standard. Yeah, it zips along. I I like it. This is, there's something playful in Ian's voice. There's something playful about the whole thing. You know, yeah. the, the content, which we'll obviously get into in a minute, is definitely dark. But, yeah. 
but there's something very playful about it and and not despairing. Yeah, it's it's interesting in, in the way that, that it's, it's performed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a little tongue in cheek maybe that it's because the fact that it's being presented as not despairing is tongue in cheek. Yes. I think, yeah. Which is, you know, which is a not an uncommon approach to serious material. Right, it's it's a form of satire. Yeah. It's a form of satire. And but I just love the the sort of wink in in Ian's I that I that seems to be coming through his voice on this. I, yeah. I this is delightful. I um this is I, I I can't wait to listen to this song a bunch more times. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty darn good. The last thing that I would like to say about it musically is this is one of those fairly rare instances where it's just boom done at the end. Just cuts out super yep. drop. Not even yeah. a fade, not even like it doesn't even work you into the feeling of it ending it's almost one of those you know if they if they picked up and played 15 seconds of that that instrumental breakdown again it would fit perfectly with the tall surprise we're not actually done ending that we see every yes. now and then no but it's a, it's got a classic uh, hornpipe halt at the end that's what they say yeah yeah when music theory professors talk about the hornpipe halt which is usually the bulk of semester 2 they yeah. they mention everything in our lives yeah, it's and textbook it. yeah yeah classic the horn all the all, all the hornpipe clubs are going to really come after us for this episode nick <laughs> all one of them <laughs> with with their their three members which are the people you saw in that in that youtube video they're going to set sail and in five to six business months they'll be on our doorstep Assuming they have not perished of scurvy. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure they bring some limes. <laughs> so, Nick, that sort of wraps it up as, for music. Let's yeah. Let's rap about the lyrics. Yeah. Let's chew the cabbage about the lyrics. Let's have a good old chin wag about the lyrics. Let's chaw McGraw the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> There's a black cloud on the high rise. There's a black cloud on the high rise. Wow. Now, already we sort of... It's like broadsword is brewing in his in his mind. Yeah. Instantly you get you get imagery, you get a picture of what we're looking at of of where we are. Yes. Uh, a sulfurous haze below and mm. the seagulls drift darkly on the seaway where long ships go. And a sulfurous haze below. And the seagulls drift darkly on the seaway where long ships go. You know what the seagulls drift darkly reminds me very much of? Mm, no. No, I don't. Well, you remember, do you remember when we were children, Nick? I try not to, but yeah, yeah. every now and then when I'm taking a long, long bath, weeping <laughs> into my tea, it comes back to me. Yeah. So, you know, when we were kids, and not that this has stopped happening, but I think <laughs> when we were kids, it was... There was a lot of reporting on the oil spills. There were a couple of very, oh, yeah. very, very big oil spills that happened when we were, you know, preteens or children. And the images of seabirds covered in oil. Yeah. I think I think I saw them at an age when I was when my mind just like grabbed that. And, and you know, that's like an, an image that sort of burned sure. in my memory. Yeah, I think was Deepwater Horizon the first real big one, I think. Or the um, well, there were, the Valdez was was. I mean, there have been. I'm sure that it happened before we were born as well. Yeah, the Exxon Valdez was like the 80s, I believe. That was before we we knew. But what the the one down in Louisiana that was, uh, the yeah Horizon, I think Clearwater Horizon. Yeah, one of those Clearwater. That's funny. Deepwater Horizon oil spill Deepwater. was 2010. Not that long ago. Then what was there was one in when we were in high school. At any rate. The image of of sea animals covered in petroleum in raw oil, I think, really fixed in my memory, and that's that's what I think of. Whether that's what Ian meant or not, in that lyric, that's what it brings to my mind. The seagulls drifting darkly. Yes, I see it as them being stained by this black cloud. You know, mm, yeah, that they are flying through this this burning soot this sulfurous haze and and the the normally white or mildly gray of a seagull is is there they're they're now a black seabird basically yeah 
And of course, you know, the, the long ships, you know, over the past couple of decades or the past 50 years, ships have just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now we right. have these crazy mega ships that are, you know, just is so incredibly massive. But I, I imagine at the time they were, you know, at the time of the writing, there was as well a big jump in the size of ships. So sure. I wonder if that's, you know, long ships is, is kind of, Funny because a long ship is also what you call a Viking, right? Yeah, yeah it, it, it references the the a long boat. Yeah, but I it seems like he's referring to the big the big industrial ships sure. that would have been having an uptick in their activities around this time. Whether it's an oil tanker or shipping containers coming from China, you know, any any or number coal. or coal. Yeah, they're 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 coming and going, and in particular, this song feels to me like it it belongs in kind of his his isle of sky theme you know this Hmm. is this is happening i feel like he's on the cliffs of the isle of sky watching all this happening you know i I think it ties in really pretty perfectly it's a companion song to north sea oil well certainly yeah i mean and i was i was gonna say it could be anywhere on that coast could yeah. be anywhere in Scotland or even Northern England, you know. Yeah. Manchester, Liverpool, these were cities that participated greatly in the big industrial boom and whose economies were really focused around that. Yeah. But it it, it makes me think of North Sea oil because of our next verse. There's the sweet sound of oil wells drilling. There's the sweet sound of oil wells drilling. So so it's close enough to experience this this new kind of I mean, it's not really new it's not burgeoning but i mean as as we said a couple of episodes ago the the oil industry would boom and bust on on the isle of sky right. you know so this is right, this is seeing right, another right. one kind of pop up as new roads come rolling in they're building roads to bring in to to bring in tankers to bring in workers to throw up playing card houses which is they're putting up cheap housing to house all of these people while yeah. this this oil is happening yeah, I think you're. I think that's. I think that's spot on, Nick. How perceptive of you! I'm. Sh- I'm absolutely shocked you did not get that. Or are you just giving me this one? Are you, are you giving me a win? Well, you've had longer to sit with this song. That's that's true. I f- I suppose. You must have that's lubricated true. your brain with the oil can of perception. A uh, fish oil, yeah. The fish oil can of perception. <laughs> when you finish your sardines, you just drip the last little bits into your brain. Right in your ear, yeah. It goes directly into the brain science. So this being another, to me, like I said, this is an Isle of Sky song. I want to mention the text that I sent to you yesterday morning. I was in a liquor store in Skinny Atlas, New York. Oh, yes, you were. I was buying a bottle of Pims for my soon-to-be stepmother, and I was buying, uh, looking for a bottle of scotch for my dad as their wedding is on Saturday. I'm doing the ceremony for their wedding. Which, congratulations. That's so exciting. Mr. and Mrs. McGill, very exciting. So they they said, we don't want any presents, et cetera. We just want it to be a party. But of course, I'm, I'm buying them some booze. Kathy, my, my soon-to-be stepmother, has never had Pims before. So I wanted to, oh. to get her a bottle and try it. It's a delightful treat. But I know my dad drinks scotch occasionally. Sure. And I, I was looking on the shelf. They had such a wide selection, and and I didn't want to get him a bottom of bottom of the barrel. I didn't want to get him like something crazy, a couple hundred dollars worth, especially if he they're sure, saying sure. we don't want presents. And I was like, how am I going to decide? And I saw a single box called Talisker Storm, single malt <laughs> Scotch whiskey, and on the box it says the only distillery on the Isle of Skye. How could you not? How could I not? And that was the that was the 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 hint. That was the sign for me to buy that bottle of scotch. And a bottle um, of sky. A bottle of sky. Just a just a sip of sky. And I will report back to you if we crack into it uh, on Friday. I'll report back to you and let you know how it is. Very exciting. Well, I think that you are so perceptive to have linked the the isle of sky to the to the boom to the oil boom and bust and and i think it does fit right in i think you could also apply this song to any of the oil towns across the, the world agreed yeah you know this this could as easily be talking about the the fracking boom in 
Pennsylvania sure. in you know five or ten years ago, right? Or right. the the oil towns in um, in those northern states that we have here in America. <laughs> those those ones, yeah, the square ones, <laughs> the Midwest oil, where where all the, those pipelines run from Canada down to us, you know. Yeah, just that that concept of like, oh well, we discovered a new way to exploit these natural resources let's quickly build a road and yeah. you know just do it with fastness as our main priority so we don't care what it tears up and we're going to throw up some houses yeah squappity boop well we, i mean we see the other side of that coin in the the midwest the lower midwest there are ghost towns all over the place from the gold boom oh of course i mean this is something that has been happening in humanity in a way, forever, but yeah. more, more extremely since the Industrial Revolution, and we right. and since we've been able to exploit resources much more quickly, and and efficiently, and yeah. efficiently, yeah. and to make things efficient, one of the things you do is build things that, because you know that the industry isn't going to last, you you're right. not going to build anything in a way that it's going to last, so you throw up playing card houses. Yeah. And so what you end up sacrificing, besides the environment, obviously, is the living conditions of the people who are working these booms. Yeah. I think that it's it's interesting, you know, the line, both the playing card houses... To throw up playing card houses. And also, um, got a new car and a Luan suite. Got a new car and a Luan suite. I think that the the lyrics that we have listed as Lu N suite, but Luan is mm. a building material that is yeah. extremely it's fairly cheap, it's very lightweight. It's particle board, it's pressed pressed particle it's board. It's a form, yeah, it's something it's yeah. basically like that. So you could in theory furnish or finish the inside of a dwelling with that. Yeah. And it wouldn't cost you very much. And it's not super attractive. That's what we, when we would resurface the stage at the John Cranford Adams Playhouse at Hofstra, that's what we, we put down Luan when we resurfaced the stage. Yes, it's used, it's used a lot in theatrical building. I, I like that idea. However, I want to, I, I think it should be Lou en suite, meaning we have, we have a bathroom in our house. He's, this verse is praising this is the capitalism working toward us environment be damned this is look at us look at how we're living we've got a new car we've got a bathroom in the house a wage rise every second week the propaganda on a balance sheet that guarantees everything got a new car and a Luan suite and a wage rise every second week propaganda on a balance They can cook the numbers however they want. As long as we're working here, as long as there's a job, look at how we're living. You know, I don't think you're wrong about that. And <laughs> I think that, you know, in terms of that specific line, I think it works either way. It does. It does. And we would have to mind probe Ian Anderson in order to find out what the lyric actually was. Right. We, we would ask him about the song, Everything in Our Lives. And he'd be like, I, I never wrote a song like that i've never written and that then song. and then we would ask our our extraterrestrial friends to insert a shiny rod mm -hmm. into his cranium and we'd yep. say what about now <laughs> do you remember now and he starts drooling and it would be messy but we'd get we'd get all the information we ever wanted out of him but the extraterrestrials just will not return my calls i don't know what i did nope. you keep asking for probings i think they they <laughs> you're a little little you're probe thirsty, I believe. Too, too, vo too <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> too eager. Yeah. Okay. So that is, let's see, that goes into, that's, that's the, the end of the new content. Everything that he sings after that is our, is a, as a repeat, but the proto chorus ties into that. Like, look at, look at how we're living. Look at that. It's, and you and I will have everything in our lives. Yes. You and I will have everything in our lives. And you and I will have everything in our lives. Yes. You and I will have everything in our lives. 
it's almost like he's trying to convince his partner to go with him to do this. Come with me to the boom town. We'll make yeah. tons of money and we'll destroy the environment, but it'll afford us anything we want. But we'll live well for now. You know, there's yeah. no guarantee. You know, I mean, I don't think anybody goes into an oil job thinking it's going to last forever, you know, so. Well, I mean, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about the the people that I met in West Virginia who were coal miners. And, right. you know, the wages are, because the work is so incredibly dangerous, and yeah, it's called hazard all, pay. Yeah. Well, yes. And the hours are so long. Yeah. And, you know, when when it's in the boom phase, they want people to work as just nonstop. Yep. Right. And right. so, you know, if you take a year of that work and don't blow all your money on pills <laughs> right. and, and buying Mustangs, you could, in theory, save up enough to really transform your life. But they know that these people are so gosh darn broke and their bodies will be literally broken that yeah. opiates are are a great way to keep them working, you know? So they know that they're going to be spending that money and they're going to want to say, oh, we'll we'll stay another year. We got to make a little bit more. It's like gambling. It's like anything else. You know, we're just, we'll stick it out a little bit more. And then you have black lung and an opiate addiction and you can't move because your, your, your back is seized. And a 1998 white Mustang. And a 1998 white Mustang. There's a hole in the leather in the seat that you could get fixed, but it's just, it's not in the budget right now. But if you pick at it, it's going to get worse. Yeah, don't, don't, just don't look at it. Don't look at it. You know, it's interesting. I think, I think you're right, you know, in terms of the specific geography of this song. I also think that you could use it. And I, I think that Ian probably did intend it as a metaphor for the broader. Yes. Process of capitalism and, and the, the cycle of boom and bust and the exploitation yeah. of, of natural resources. But it's interesting that you bring up the you know the effect on the human body because I, I feel like one of the themes of this song is for capitalism to work you have to sacrifice literally everything yeah that is a natural life process so whether yeah. that's the migration patterns of the seabirds or the toxicity level of the ocean you know whether it's something in the quote unquote external environment or whether it's the living space of your workers, the mental health of your workers, or the actual internal health of your workers. All of that has to be exploited for the balance sheet. Right. And the the great big CEO at the top is just seeing the money pour in and does not care what happens to get that money. Well, and, you know, the propaganda aspect of the balance sheet is that these companies always say every single time when they come into a small community and they say, you know, they're like, oh, you know, we found oil. We're going to exploit the hell out of it. We're going to make so much money. The, the, the pitch is always, oh, but we're going to create jobs. Yeah. We're going to support this community and create jobs. And of course, what happens is they exploit the community and leave them with nothing. Yeah. And, and yeah. a ruined environment. That's, that's the, but that's the propaganda. You can take, you can say, look, look at these numbers. Look how good the numbers yeah. are. Ex excuse me a moment while I get political. That's the downfall of, of capitalism and, and that, that Republican mindset is jobs at the cost of everything else. That's all we want. That, that jobs is at a, the cost of jobs. Yeah. Or jobs at the, at the cost of the ability to do jobs or jobs at the cost of the people who do those jobs. Jobs at the cost of the worker. We are expendable. We are cogs in the machine. Once we go down, someone else will take that job. And believe me, we will go down. <laughs> a, For a less than you think. Blaze of glory. <laughs> well, <sighs> Omen, anything else about everything in our lives? I do think that the, that the title and the repeating chorus of But You and I Will Have Everything in Our Lives is the psychological spark plug that makes the engine of capitalism tick. Yeah. Because oh, I yeah, think that absolutely. that is the, that's how we justify it to ourselves as participants in capitalism. Yep. You know, I know that my actions are going to have this negative effect on the world around me, but the trade-off is that 
I can have everything in my life that I want. It's, it's just enough to get someone to take the bait. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is the bait. Because everything in the lives of some dude in West Virginia or Scotland or the Isle of Skye, wherever, is a, uh, it's a drop in the bucket. The Isle of Skye, often called the West Virginia of Scotland. Yeah. Very common phrase. West Virginia, often called the Isle of Skye of Appalachia. That's it. Yeah. The lives of those people, the money that you, quote unquote, invest in those people is a drop in the bucket of what the, the oh, CEOs yeah. are, are, are earning. So, yeah, it's, it's easy enough to promise them anything that they want. But even more broadly, I mean, just in capitalism, you know, whenever you take a job, you think, oh, I don't really want to do this job, but it's going to afford me the things that I do want. Right. I'm going right. to be able to, you know, have a lovely pair of jeans. That's going to make it all worth it. And a hamburger <laughs> with is, my gal. Is this 1980s uh, Russia where, where blue jeans were like a hot commodity on the black market? Yeah. Yeah. You know, my, um, my history teacher or my geography teacher in middle school did, has traveled extensively and uh -huh. She said when she went to Russia in the 80s and 90s, she would always buy, she would like go to Kmart and buy a bunch of, you know, branded but cheap yeah. blue jeans. Yep. And then she would use them as as barter. And she, yeah. she was like, oh, yeah, I can get anything, you know, for money. No, you can't get anything in Russia. If you have a pair of blue jeans you're willing to trade, you can get anything you want. Yeah. I think I think we're going to get into that in with Radio Free Moscow off of under wraps. Mm. I think they mentioned blue jeans in that. If I remember correctly, that is, that will be episode 19, uh, 193 airing literally a year from now, 10 for 2022. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Nick, anything else about this song that you want to squeeze into the already bulging strained blue jeans of this episode? I no, I think I think we really hammered this one out. I didn't I don't think it's terribly deep, but I do I do love this satire aspect of this one. Yeah, it's it's some more nice kind of biting commentary that Ian takes a different approach on than than normal. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Next week, Omen. Nick. Next week is another one of what we did two weeks ago. It's going to be another instrumental combo. We've got a couple songs. We got three instrumentals next week, believe it or not. So we're going to be we're going to be listening to a triple feature of instrumentals. That's right. Next week here on the Talk Tall to Me podcast. They are the Lyricon Blues, <laughs> a single man, and my favorite Jethro Tull song name of all time should be a Led Zeppelin song name, Unicorn Battle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. It's going to be good. Yeah. Until next week, you don't have to deplete the finite resources around you. You can tap into the renewable resource of the stars themselves and send us five of those renewable stars as... A rating. There is little to no effect on the environment when you enjoy the capitalism that is our Patreon page or perhaps our Talk Told to Me merch. So you can feel better about, about it. Uh, Patreon. Yeah. We work hard in the oil well of podcasting so that you can have everything in your life that is listening to Talk Tall to Me. Help us be everything in your ears. That's right. <laughs> Until next week, I am the hastily constructed living quarters that is Omen Said. I am the soot-stained seabird, Nick McGill. We are the muddy road across the mountainside that is Feckless Momes. And this is the contract filled with empty promises. Talk tall to me. Is it 
Margaret, Margaret, Margaret. Oh, yes, y- yes. Y- you'll never believe what they said in the pub today. Oh, what is it, James? I've, I'm, I'm shaking in my cup of tea. Get out of your tea and listen to me, Margaret. Splish, splash, splash, splash. They said that they're putting up an oil field on the coast of the Isle of Skye and, and they're looking for workers. Oh, James, you don't want to move there, do you? I know it's cold and it's miserable and there's nothing to eat but rocks and seabirds, but we'll have all the money in the world while we're there. Well, well, would we, would we have enough to buy one of those four-legged stools so I don't have to sit on the three-legged stool? I know your balance is, is really starting to decline in your age, Margaret, but you know what? I'll buy you two four-legged stools. I'll buy you an eight-legged stool, Margaret. We'll have oh, everything in our lives. That's eight more legs than I have. <laughs> oh, but James, James, would we have one of them self-stirring pots that I saw on the telly the other day? That's right. We'll have a whole stove covered in self-stirring pots. You could make chilli and porridge and stir your under things in the hot water at the same time. Margaret, we'll have everything in our lives. Oh, but, oh, but James, James, will we have one of them pocket telegram machines where I can, I can type out a message to me ma and it'll send it like the devil's own spots across the sky. Margaret, I'll get you one for each family member. That way you won't mix them up. We'll label them and you can contact every one of them and not even have to see them. I won't even have to see your family anymore, Margaret. We'll have everything in our lives. Oh, but James, what if I get bored? What if I get bored and I miss going down to the pub and dance on a wee harden pipe with, with, with Susie? What, what could I have to entertain myself up there? Margaret, we'll finally be able to listen to podcasts. <gasps> That's right. And we'll, the first one we'll start with is Talk Tull to Me. Oh, but James, how could we afford that? It's a proud member of the Feckless Mom's Audio Network. That's right, Margaret. But with that fat oil money, we'll have everything in our lives. Even for the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> The Hornpipe 